Hi, Dan Sullivan here, and this is our next episode of Exponential Wisdom, and I have the advanced scout map maker for the exponential world, Peter Diamandis. And Peter, we're going to talk about real estate. Talk about the opposite of digital. It's actually dirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan. A pleasure as always, pal. Good, good. Dirt by the square yard. So, Peter, you've just had an experience. You've had a complete analog experience of buying and shifting your residence in the LA area. So it probably gave you a lot of insight of what is very, very old that's probably going to change and things that are new that are going to come on board. Yeah, I mean, real estate shopping is, I think, probably as frustrating as retail shopping at the end of the day. And it is totally analog, right? So the experience we all know is, okay, open houses are between one o'clock and five o'clock on Sundays. And if you want to go see the place, otherwise it's a pain in the neck, you got to call a real estate broker and then you go inside and you don't have all the details. And then this process of how much is it going to cost to make the changes I want? And is my furniture going to fit in there? And then going after a loan and just finding the right place. And you're sort of clear what you want and you know the price range and you know the attributes. And once you've seen 10, 20, 30 places that don't fit. I mean, I sure wish that there was an AI that just said, hey, we found it. It's right here. It's in the price range. I'm going to start bidding on it. Okay. (laughs) So, I mean, we're going to see so much change in real estate this decade. I mean, I talk about the notion that exponential technologies, first and foremost, I think gets rid of the middleman or middlewoman. Mm-hmm. And the real estate broker is one of those jobs that's going to change. Maybe not, you know, in the next two or three years, but I think within the next five years for sure. I mean, what are your thoughts, Dan? Well, I happen to live in one of the hottest, certainly residential real estate markets in the world, which is Toronto. We haven't had a downturn since 1989. Wow. And what I mean is the price of real estate has not gone down once since 1989. The amount of selling has fallen off from one year to the next, but not actually the price of real estate. During the downturn of 08, 09, you know where we live in Toronto, it went up by 18% during the American downturn. So, Wow, amazing. Yeah, and the thing is that we're an immigrant city, 60% of Toronto, 6 million population city, 3.6 million people were born outside of Canada. Okay, so it's probably one of the great immigrant cities, but it's an affluent immigrant city. You know, people come with money. China has, you know, the shift of people from outside of China and money outside of China has really ended up in Toronto to a big degree. But here's the thing about it. There are some things that are always going to be true. You know, I mean, it's the Jeff Bezos line. He says, I'm not so interested in what's going to change over the next 10 years. I'm interested in what's not going to change, what's going to be the same. And my feeling is that the feeling of having your own place, investing in it and feeling at home in it is always going to be a human desire. And, you know, people are shifting from one place in the planet to another. Native-born people may not be so excited, but people from outside your country, having real estate and getting founded is a form of status in a new place. Yes, but there are so many forces that are going to change real estate. Let me tick them off, and then let's chat about each one. So mm-hmm. the first is transportation modality. So I hate commuting. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? It means that I typically like to live near where I work. And you know, if you're downtown Manhattan or downtown LA or in Santa Monica, or whatever the case, your real estate prices are high. So we're going to see electric autonomous cars where all of a sudden your commute time is really immaterial. Mm-hmm. So I know that if I were willing to commute an hour, I could get twice the house per dollar, right? Yeah, and you could turn the garage into something else. And you could turn your garage into extra living space because you don't need that. So we're going to see autonomous cars spreading cities out, I think. And then flying cars, Uber is going to hit aerial Mm ride-sharing, autonomous electric flying vehicles Mm -hmm. to carry you point to point in 2020 in LA and, and Dallas, the first two cities are targeting. And then you might even see Hyperloop connecting bedroom cities where You could live what would have otherwise been a three-hour drive away, which is like now 10, 15 minutes in a Hyperloop. So you could Hyperloop into downtown and live in a bedroom city that's, 
you know, three hour drive away or a 15 minute Hyperloop drive. So transport. And then there's is, teleconferencing and not only teleconferencing, but hologram yeah. quality. You look like you're there, but you're not there. So you might live someplace and you might work in a virtual environment where you put on your VR goggles and your haptic suit and you meet in virtual conference rooms and have conversations. But your office, a company's office, can be totally virtualized. Well, the other thing, and we talked about this before, and it's the subject of a whole podcast, but the stores, every store wants to come to you rather than you going to the store. Yeah, absolutely. So you are going to not get in your car and drive to Saks to try on a dress. You're going to put on your VR headset and you're going to go to a virtual store where everything is in your size and an AI agent is showing you the latest fashions and you're looking at yourself in a virtual mirror wearing that and saying, yes, I want it. And then Mm -hmm. it's getting delivered by drones that afternoon. In Toronto, you know, it's got a hundred year buildup of affluent men's markets and everything else. But this Indochine, which is a men's clothing store where you get made to measure that's done digitally when you go into the shop, you just go into a booth and turn around and you can pick any fabric, any style. You still have to go into the store to do it, but in the future, you'll probably be able to do that at home. Absolutely. So all of a sudden, So what we see here is virtual reality, broadband, autonomous vehicles or high-speed vehicles are going to change where we live and where we work. So this going from the rural areas into the urban areas, this concentration, because that's where the jobs are, I think will start to fall off to some degree because you can get your entertainment, you can get your jobs, you can get all this stuff and still live in more luxury, lower priced real estate, bigger houses outside of the downtown urban area. What else is going to change the real estate? I mean, again, we talked about how you buy real estate. I think it's going to change. Well, the other thing is that the real estate that you buy is going to be responsive to you in a way that it isn't right now. In other words, that there's going to be sensors. You know, your energy may be taken care of totally by your roof panels, the power wall, things like that. You know, the two things that most determined Real estate, let's say going back 100 years, was location, obviously, location close to work. The other thing was transportation in general. Yep. So in the U.S., there's a great contrast between two types of city. There's railroad cities and there's car cities. You know, I grew up in Cleveland. Cleveland was a railroad city and all the big industrial cities. They were formed about the fact that the railroad, both for freight and passengers, came into the center of the city. Yep. And so the industry was built up. The big corporations were built up close to the center of the city. I visit Phoenix a lot. I visit L.A. a lot. They're car cities. I went to Koreatown for some Korean food last January when I was in for Abundance 360. And the woman says, you know, you're actually very close to Los Angeles here. (laughs) Actually, she says, you're actually in Los Angeles. And I said, I knew one day when I went to L.A., I would actually be in Los Angeles. You know, and that shows a car city, very spread out, lots of real estate people are spread out. But I think those are historical models that are being totally altered by technological breakthroughs, you know, this whole notion of where the industry is, where the business is. And one of Toronto's great expansion is that they did zoning laws, which allow throughout the city three types of things, residential, corporate, and retail, all in the same buildings. More and more, a lot of the buildings are going up, have all three functions. So you can live in part of the building, you can work in part of the building, and you can shop in part of the building. So I think that that's happening a lot. And that's the shift just because, you know, it's the pricing mechanism of the marketplace. What are people willing to pay for? And people are combining a lot more functions of what constitutes a good piece of real estate. Yeah, agreed. I was looking at a business plan for one company I was excited about, where for more of the youthful, imagine living in a community where every house is standardized, or let's call it a pod, right? In this case, with shipping containers, And imagine if you wake up one day, you're living in an L.A. pod and you say, you know, I want to move to New York and you push a button and then the system basically doesn't relocate your pod, but comes and picks up all your stuff in your house 
and puts it into an identical house in New York <laughs> while you drive across the country and take a few extra days. So you show up and your house looks identical inside, but you're now living in New York. Yeah. One of the things, and you could probably talk about this, I believe that with technological breakthroughs, that everybody who's got a technological breakthrough wants to say that this is going to be a mainstream thing, but all the technological breakthroughs are actually in competition with people's attention. They're in competition with people's pocketbook, and they're in competition with varying lifestyles that people have. So what I believe is every prediction you make is going to happen with someone. In other words, there's going mm -hmm. to be some people who actually try this out, but it's unpredictable which ones are really going to catch on with the mass population. Most of the money's made with mass sales, not necessarily with individual sales. But what's the shift for you? Because I know where you were, where you were living, and I know on Google Map, because I went and looked up after you told me where you were going, I know where it is. Just what's the shift been for you, the actual experience of being in one place, walking out in the morning, being in the other place, walking out in the morning? Oh, I think the older place was more when, before I had kids, and it was more in the main street area in Santa Monica, and the new place is more rural, you know, flatter streets, places where the kids can ride bikes and scooters and so forth. So it's a little more isolated from where I was and more sort of, mm -hmm. you know, more beautiful backyards and it butts up against a golf course. I don't play golf at all. I, I'm very but surprised nice to hear greenery. that. Yeah, yeah, you know me. I think I would <laughs> probably <laughs> go nuts. You'd do it if you had a jetpack. I'd do it if I had a jetpack or a robot that would take the putts for me. I was just watching yeah. this robot that gets a hole in one every time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course it does. You know, another interesting piece of the real estate business that's happening is we are now in a position where we can create a exact virtual duplicate of Manhattan. So that, you know, you have drones that are scanning in detailed resolution the outsides of buildings and technology actually on a smartphone that can scan insides of buildings. Yeah. And so it is possible to create a fully virtualized replica of every building in Manhattan. And you can imagine having saying, listen, I'll meet you at the top of the Empire State Building in the virtual world and you in your avatar appear there. And by the way, somebody would own that three-dimensional version of the Empire State Building, probably the same company that owns the real one would claim the rights to the virtualized one in a particular mm -hmm. world. There may be an infinite number of versions of it. But I find that absolutely fascinating, right? Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but it segues our next podcast, which is about privacy, because I want to talk to you about my great breakthrough thought about privacy, but you've exactly hit on okay. you know, something I want to talk about. But I will tell you this, that pretty soon, I mean, you're in the early stages of it, but that will be home, and home is an experience that's above and beyond a house. Mm -hmm. In other words, you create an environment which is your environment. See, we saved all that problem. You had that problem of looking at, we don't look at 30 houses, we just look at a house next to us and we buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, the, you're the growing viral infection. We're the compound. We have a compound <laughs> and then we knit it all together with landscaping and, and everything like that. Because I'm kind of, uh, astrologically, you and I should have the same attitude because we're Tauruses, which is people with a great sense of comfort and wealth and quality of life. You know, if you double the number of homes you own every year, you know, in 30 years, you'll own all of Toronto. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, there is how much is enough. And uh, right now, we're okay with what that is. But, you know, my sense is that the Jeff Bezos statement, the desire for a place you call home, I think, is integral to human nature. And we've already gone through a lot of shifts of what constitutes our living space in the last, it's always changing. Certainly within the United States, we're always getting a different sense about that. But 
the thing is that none of these breakthroughs will be happening unless they're fascinating to people, they're motivating to people, you know, and I think it takes in a lot of other dimensions like how they're working, how they like to meet people, what kind of entertainment, what kind of lifestyle, what kind of personal life do they have. So, and these are all shifting, these are all shifting. We live in a personal home community, but our home, our home for strategic coaches in a renovated warehouse with exposed brick and beams and everything else. But this was in the middle of an old factory district that when we moved here was all broken down warehouses, empty fields and everything else. And now it's the largest singles community in the world. Wow. And the wow. interesting thing is that people are buying 300 square feet condos here, and they're doing it because it's the first step. They'll have 300, then they'll have 600, then they'll have 1,500. And then they'll own all of Toronto, <laughs> 30 <Yeah>. doublings later. <laughs> Moses Namer, who was an original contributor to Singularity, and I think yes. you've always had a communication with Moses. He's in the next block from us. And he came over and he says, when you walk around here, you won't see any kids. There are no daycare centers, nothing that you would attach. And he said, the reason is these are singles, you know, they're singles living alone, singles. But he said, this is their launch pad. They're coming down here to get started. And then each of them probably has a unique and different real estate future, but this is where they're all starting. And that's another thing, which is a phenomenon, having a district this big, which is just about people who are just getting started. They're just out of college. They're in their 20s. But, you know, in their 40s, they're not going to want to live here. They'll live someplace else. Let me hit on two other tech areas that are interesting in the real estate business. The first is the technology to 3D print houses is here. It's growing in capability substantially. And uh, I have a dear friend of mine, Ivy Reichenthal, who's mm-hmm. on my board at XPRIZE and one of the top thinkers in this area. And I bring him to A360 every year to speak about what is the cutting edge of 3D printing. In the real estate business, it's real. There's an entrepreneur who read bold and gives me credit for this. They are 3D printing full communities, 100 house communities, right? So they will 3D print a 300 square foot home with a porch and it's for the poor people and you know it's a minimal cost but when you give a person a home it changes their lives right this is your home you own it it's your place it's your nest and so in terms of uplifting people in the mm-hmm. developing world in the rising billion so to speak here's a way and i love the idea that you could give everybody a customized home yeah right you have five kids great this has got you know a number of small bedrooms in it so that's a big one Part of L.A. is almost like third world just because people have kind of come from the third world. You know, it's a desperate need for a lot of people who have just come into L.A. to have their own home. It's crazy. Real estate is visceral. The desire for your own place is a visceral human quality. Comfort and safety. Comfort and safety and familiarity and It's a lot. We can talk about things that we hold on to from the old days. That'd be an interesting thing. My clock radio. I'll give you the story of my clock radio in a future podcast. (laughs) It's really interesting. It's precious. I will not get rid of this clock radio, but, (laughs) but it's part of my comfort level that I have an attachment to something that's been there a long time. And it doesn't have to be a lot, but I want something that's there for a long time. Including friends. Yeah, okay, well, good. I, I hope you hold on to me for a while, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I know I intend to hold on to you. On a related note, the other thing I was going to mention technology-wise is the whole creation of smart houses. So having moved into a new house, I'm embedding technology, and I just have hooked up my Alexa, my Amazon Echo to turn on the lights in my office and turn on the jacuzzi and be able to change the temperature and all of that. And it's interesting to be able, you know, you can change the name on your Alexa to refer to it as Echo or computer. And so I change it to computer a la Star Trek because, you know, James Kirk would say computer or tell me about the aliens, whatever. So, uh, you know, I'll walk in and I'll say computer, good morning, turn on the office lights and they'll say, you know, good morning, office lights on, you know. And so that is a interesting Imbuing your house with intelligence and making it responsive, I think, is going to be an interesting future as well. 
Mine would be Betty, and I want her to have a Brooklyn accent. (laughs) (laughs) Though I've always wanted to have a uh, morning alarm that you could set the attitude, and there's a setting called Mm -hmm. bitchy, (laughs) so that when it wakes up, it goes, Dan, get your butt out of bed, you lazy bastard. Get out of bed right now, right? Or you can set it at sexy and say, Dan, you are awesome awesome i so want you get out of bed yeah, yeah. anyway it would be i think if anybody's listening and wants to create a fun company for me that would be it yeah yeah peter just lie there i'm <laughs> just gonna watch you for a few minutes i just want to look at though you i don't want everybody minutes. to know my settings so <laughs> yeah. this whole conversation yeah. of privacy starts to become important yeah though the question is is there really any privacy out there i have a very concrete opinion about whether privacy exists or not but i'll tell you about it in our next podcast if you'd like Yeah, that's really interesting. I just want to say one last thing. Yeah. This was just a little sign, a photograph of a sign that I picked up on the internet about two weeks ago. And the sign says, I will be impressed with technology when I can download a taco. (laughs) Coming soon. (laughs) Yeah. Coming soon. Holodeck special, yes. (laughs) Anyway, you know, what I think a discussion like this does, it wakes up sensors in people's brains and something that they wouldn't have been interested in. They said, oh, I heard that. I heard that. I'm going to look into that. Or there's some place near them where things like this are happening and they go see it. And I think this is how the word spreads. Awesome, buddy. So shall we uh, pick up on the topic of privacy next? Love to. Thank you. All right. See you in our next podcast, Dan. Have an awesome day. Thanks.